أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين إمام المتقين قائد الغر المحدلين مولانا ومولى الثقلين سيدنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم طريقتنا الصحبة والخير في الجمعية أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أطيع الله وأطيع الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم أبي الله أبي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and أبي those who are in authority now this أبي those who are in authority some people uh, they give a different تأويل أبي الله أبي prophet and those in authority they take it to be uh, مطلقة that you have to obey all forms of authority wherever you are is true unless it's, it contradicts your morality it contradicts your humanity it contradicts your religion your religious uh, rules that you apply on yourself then what comes first human law or allah's law that's the question because religions as we believe came with only goodness for for uh, for uh, humanity Allah is for us Muslims Allah is the creator he knows his creation best and he sent them guidance for to live uh, to the fullest and best potential as a human being can live uh, and every order of Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the tongues of his prophet is keeping harm away spiritual harm away from human beings or physical harm away from human beings. So we are obliged to obey wherever we are. The contract to go to a country, you have to obey the, the rules and the laws. But as long as there, you have freedom to choose to obey your Lord, to choose to follow your religion, to choose to... What if tomorrow in a democratic country uh, people vote on a rule or a law that contradicts your moral code. What are you going to do? Or your beliefs. What are you going to do? You say we obey the authority? You cannot. You know, you have to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ardullahi wasi'a. If you can't follow and practice your religion, you have to find uh, another way to do it. But now, subhanAllah, uh, I, I was going to speak about something else. But this uh, is, is important because we are entering uncharted waters in, in human history. With the technological advances that we are experiencing, it seems that uh, the, the world is shrinking. Uh, the world is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, now uh, they they have the ability and the technological ability. If there is no restrictions, uh, moral codes or restrictions that they go by, to basically observe every movement and action of the human being all over the world. So we are in, in this process now. Which way things are going to go? We may be living in a world where every movement of the human being is observed. Every, every action is controlled. Uh, they're already doing this in China. In China, they have now, like just like you have a credit score uh, that shows your behavior financially, now they have a credit score, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. If, uh, if uh, maybe the gentleman can, can come closer so that maybe the ladies can, can sit up on the green uh, as, much, as much as possible. Welcome. Bismillah. Uh, Tfadda. So, so they have, a, I was watching the other day, they have a credit score for your behavior. So if you do something, for example, you jaywalk, you get uh, minus 10 points. If you, uh, if you post something online that, that the government deems inappropriate, you lose another 10 points. 
20 points like this and then they have a triple a score for really obedient servants and uh, that do everything according to the government or, or officials or i don't know who if you get over 1050 you have a triple a score and they give you a lot of uh, uh, goodies and so you yeah doors open for you if you have that score and then they have under 1050 is a a score if uh, you you lose some of the top notch uh, perks but you're still good then if you do more naughty stuff the score goes down to b you're still okay you know under when you get to c you're stuck in c for 3 years no matter what you do and if you get to d i mean doors start to shut in your way you can't get this you can't do this you can't this is already happening in our world in a huge country with 1.2 billion people so we all know what this technology can be used for and uh, people think oh it will never happen don't say it never you never know what will happen for us what is our concern dunya or akhirah وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ, تذروه الرِّيَاحِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مُخْتَدِرًا Surah Yaseen Allah is saying, give him the example of this world is like اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَا Water that came down from the sky and mixed with the soil and then greens start sprouting. Very lush, beautiful green. And then suddenly that green turns into yellow, as we are seeing now the trees. And then it died, and then it withered, disappeared. He's, Allah is giving us the similitude of this world. It's just like that. It's like a season, really. The human life is a season, like the plants, and we will disappear completely. So... Prophet's advice, Man ja'ala hamman wahida, Prophet ﷺ said, whoever makes his concern, one concern. Man ja'ala hamman wahid, hamman ma'ad. If you make your main concern in this world, akhirah, hamman ma'ad. You are just concerned how to please your Lord, how to reach, uh, to become a good servant, how to reach Akhirah and Allah is happy with you eternally. This is eternity we're talking about. If you make that your main concern, what, what is Prophet ﷺ said? What is the, the result? He said, All other worries will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of. If you make your concern, and he will make you rich. Wealthy in, in all forms, يعني, not just جعل غنى, your, your, your wealth between his eyes means so attainable. The opposite, if a person makes uh, this dunya uh, his main concern, شتت الله, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, as the hadith said, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala من جعل الهموم ومن تشعبت به الهموم and the one who has many يعني, things pulling him his business his all dunya affairs pulling him left and right تشعبت has many affairs pulling him this, this way or that way ومن تشعبت به الهموم من أحوال الدنيا دنيا, دنيا matters لم يبال الله في أي أوديتها هلك. Allah will not be care in which of its valleys he destroys himself. He will not care. This is important because we have to get that priority straight. If we are here in this dunya and our concern is not akhirah. We are in danger. This hadith says, you know, if you your akhirah becomes 
back and every you, your concern yourself your energy your life is spent on only dunya matters then what will happen so we have to understand that every day presents an opportunity for us nabi sallallahu said also at dunya mal'una مَلْعُونُ مَا فِيهَا إِلَّا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ وَمَا وَلَا أَوْ عِلْمُ أَوْ عَالِمٌ أَوْ مُتَعَلِّمٌ That this dunya is cursed, means it is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الدُّنْيَا لَا تَزِدُ عِنَّ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضًا This whole dunya does not weigh a wing of an atom to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, is, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, dunya mal'una means it is despised by Allah. وَمَلْعُونُ مَا فِيهَا And everything in it, is despised because it's worthless it's useless except what illa dhikrullah except the remembrance of allah wa ma wala and everything connected to that dhikr wa alimun wa alimin wa mutaallim and a person that is learning and teaching like this now time we are living in especially in western countries we don't have to everybody has to look at themselves what is our priorities why why are we in this world and if akhirah is our priorities then it becomes clear then when we make choices we make choices based on those priorities we don't make choices based on dunya matters so we have to be from people of akhirah ما من فجر يوم ينشق إلا نادى مناد يا ابن آدم أنا يوم جديد فاغتنمني فإني لا أعود إلى إلى حتى يوم إلى يوم القيامة. Every morning, every new day, we can't hear it calling, but it makes a statement, a call. O oh, son of Adam, I am a new creation, so take advantage of me. اغتنمني. I will not, you will not see me until judgment day where I will make, be witness on you. Okay? So, Allahumma salli ala al-habib al-mahboob. He showed us the way and he told us that uh, that Prophet Sallallahu was the perfect creation, was azhadu al-khalq. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Prophet Sallallahu laid down one day on his side and this is to show you the perfection. And the guidance is so clear in the personality of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu One time he was laying down and he got up. And we all know there's many hadiths. The one of Sayyidina Umar. This is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He said that he got up and we could see the mark. Hasir is just uh, uh, the wood, uh, what do you call them? Straw mat, straw mat, wooden straw mat. So your Prophet ﷺ, Sayyid al-Alameen, Sayyid al-Khalq, Imam al-Muttaqeen, was laying down on a straw mat when he slept. The floor and a straw mat. And because of his the weight of his body when he woke up, the straw mat had the markings. So Prophet ﷺ, the, the Sahaba that uh, with him, he said, they said, فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ اتَّخَذْنَا لَكَ وِطَاءً If we... If you allow us, they would love to serve Prophet ﷺ in any which way. If you allow us to get you something soft to put يعني, for you. And look at the answer of Sayyidina Muhammad. فَقَالَ مَالِي وَلِلْدُّنْيَا Look at that. What is, it, what is he calling dunya? What is he calling dunya? A straw mat. A wita. A soft, uh, a soft cover to put on. For him, he's like, this is lavish. Mali wa dunya, he said. What is it? What, what am I? What, what? It's not my concern. This dunya, he said. Mali wa dunya. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ma ana fi dunya illa karaki bin istadalla tahta shajara. My example in this world, he said, is like a person who is traveling and took a break under a tree. That's it. This is the similitude of our lives. 
ثم راح وتركها and then once his break is finished he got back on his horse or he started walking again on his journey that's the example of this world we have to be ready for what's coming Mulana Sheikh Nazim for close to 60-70 years maybe used to broadcast that this world is finished it's in its last leg and he was broadcasting that prepare yourself every year this dunya is any minute prophet's promise of what's coming will appear any minute Sayyidina al-Mahdi alayhi salam the big war may come may come he was always broadcasting this Mahdi every you know, so many times in his sohba he would bring Sayyidina al-Mahdi's uh, mention divine intervention why because now nothing can fix this world there is we talk about the environment talk about the spiritual conditioning of human beings talk or lack of it talk about uh, even humanity basic human decency even uh, all the values are destroyed so you can't fix countries and societies if the individuals are completely uh, destroyed morally mentally physically spiritually so Mawlana used to, to say when uh, we would be uh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim we would be sitting with him uh, after Isha uh, and uh, he would pray Mahdi alayhi uh, Mahdi alayhi salam he would say Mahdi alayhi salam would say Azharahu Allah A'jalahu Allah we would all make dua may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send him quickly make him appear quickly because we uh, yani, this is truly now if you want to live true to yourself nothing else I'm not saying to any if you want to be honest with yourself now as a human being it's a very difficult place to be if you truly believe in something and you want to live it as a human being now it's very difficult to be so we this is the time now where al-qabidu ala dinihi kal qabidu ala al-jamr the one who really wants to hold fast to his religion is as if he is holding a burning coal so there is no time to waste we have to build fix our priorities make allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his pleasure ilaha anta maqsudi wa ridaqa matlubi make it our main focus and he's, if we believe in Sayyidina Muhammad, he's saying, if you make that your focus, all other worries will dissipate. Allah will take care of everything else. If we make that main point. But it takes, uh, it takes a leap of faith, as they say. Because, الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر. The West West and the shaitan will come and say, no, no, if you do this, this will happen. If you do that, who you have to, we have to live honestly. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be true to our our own beliefs. Not every time uh, they joke, Dajjal uh, doesn't Adam Allah Dajjal doesn't need to show miracles. He just has to broadcast it on CNN. Everybody will follow. <laughs> We're at that time. Yani, <laughs> Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, but he hasn't appeared, but his system is in in place. So we have to be really concerned and we have to uh, really now um, focus our attention on our spiritual relationship and connection to, our, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Prophet. We have to do more. We have to invest more in, in what? We have to invest more in, in our akhirah whether it is our time our wealth our uh, uh, energy we have to have a, a daily word a daily practice a daily dua a daily uh, one of the important practice that alhamdulillah we practice uh, in my household is that Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad 
is that daily sadaqa for protection. Don't leave your house. Even you leave three times, put a jar, fill it up with coins. And when it's full, um, turn it into dollars and give it out to people. But the daily sadaqah is very important nowadays. Daily word of Salah al Nabi in this time. Teach your kids to have at least 100 days, 100 times a day Salah al Nabi. Mainly 100 times a day uh, now, teenagers and young people. Minimum 40 times. A'udhu billahi min ash shaitan rajim. Mawlana Shaykh Nazim said, any time you say A'udhu billahi min ash shaitan rajim, 40 times, 200 times, he said. Minimum 40 times, shaitan leave, cannot approach you for that day. Our young people now are open targets. In school, wherever they go online. And it is dangerous time spiritually, first of all, for the human being. This is a very dangerous time to live in. And you have to hold tight to uh, to that which Prophet ﷺ prescribed for safety. Alhamdulillah, we have this small group here and uh, we hope they continue to allow us to, to gather because you don't know nowadays. But... Uh, yeah, attending the zikr is very important weekly as well. And another important practice is keeping good intentions daily. Make it a, a word and a practice to every day for a few minutes to sit, reflect upon this new creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you this new opportunity and say, Ya Rabbi, I want it to be for you. I want to make this day for you. I want to serve you. I want to be a good servant. I want to fulfill everything, every order you ordered me. I want to stay away from everything you forbade. Make it that. Because if even if, if you didn't get to do much, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your intention. Wa min Allah tawfiq bi hurmatil habib, bi hurmatil fatiha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.